The Kraft Foods Company presents The Great Gildersleeve. Uh. <laughs> it's The Great Gildersleeve, starring Harold Perry, brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of a complete line of famous quality food products. It's a beautiful, crisp morning in Summerfield, the sort of morning that makes you want to get out in the nice, fresh air. The great Gildersleeve is taking advantage of the weather to pursue a favorite hobby. <laughs> While down the hall, right next door to the great man himself, in the room of his niece, Marjorie... What a beautiful way to start the day, with Larry Lake's lovely voice singing to me. As if nothing mattered, you battered and shattered a heart so true. It takes just about ten seconds of this to get through to our sleeping beauty and... What? 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 Who's playing that confounded radio? How can anybody sleep with that? No consideration at all around this house. Like trying to sleep inside of a juke mill, a uh, jukebox. Why can't she keep that confounded thing turned down? Marjorie? Yes, come What's the idea of blasting this radio so loud? Good morning. People are trying to sleep around this house. Or I was, at least. Well, I'm sorry, Uncle Mort. But if I don't turn it loud, how can I hear Larry, lad, when I take my shower? After all... Hear who? Larry Lake, naturally. Who else is there? Oh, listen to him, Uncle Mort. Doesn't that voice do things to you? Yes, it does. It wakes me up. Now keep it low. Oh, Larry. Listen, Uncle Mort, Listen. Honestly, how wonderful can you be? Oh, yeah. Pass the sugar, Leroy, please. Sure, I'll here. And stop gulping your eggs. Now watch those bites. You'll scramble yourself. On scrambled eggs? Gee, I'll get on even eat teeth to eat scrambled eggs. Little bitty babies can eat scrambled eggs. Sure. Okay, okay. I cooked some more bacon, Mr. Gilsey. Before you reach for it, though... Don't, don't grab, Leroy. For heaven's sake, I'll pass it to you. Before you pick it up... Just don't... a minute, Bertie. What's happened to your manners all at once, my boy? Anyone would think you were starving. I am. Well, stop acting like it. I'll pass you the bacon as soon as I help myself. Oh! The plate's hot! I was trying to tell you, Mr. Gilsey. You help yourself, and I'll put on some more for Miss Marjorie. Marjorie? Hasn't she come downstairs yet? Doggone it, she knows what time we have breakfast around here, doesn't she? She should, sir. She's been eating with us for quite some time now. Yeah. If she wants to keep on eating with us, she better get down here. I expect she got delayed with that radio, Miss Gilsley. There's a singer on there that she's real fond of. Yes, I heard him this morning. Oh, there you are, young lady. Good morning, everybody. Leroy, unplug the toaster quick. Huh? Oh, never mind. I'll do it myself. Here, here. Yeah. What's all the excitement? Well, I want to plug in my little radio before it gets cold. Oh, oh, isn't he just simply... Marjorie, I've told you never to bring that radio to the... Please, Uncle Mort, just a minute. Marjorie, turn that darn thing. Listen, Leroy, let's do him take this note. Oh, for corn's sake. Isn't he wonderful, Uncle Mort? Oh, how perfect can you be? Turn that radio off this instant. All right, Uncle Mort, it's off. You don't have to yell at me, after all. Eat your breakfast. Great Scott, where did this sudden craze for this crooner come from all at once, anyway? Who is he, for Pete's sake? I've never even heard of him. You never heard of Larry Lake? Oh, Uncle Mort, really? I mean, honestly, how square can you be? Square? He's just the greatest thing in radio, that's all. Well, he's... He's only going to take the place of Frank Sinatra, that's all. Well, that won't upset me too much. <laughs> Those fellows all sound about alike anyway. I don't know how you can say such a thing, Uncle Mort. After all, you're supposed to know a little about singing, and I you... know quite a bit about singing, young lady. Sure he does. You know what Mrs. Bullard said, Uncle? 
She said when you sing the road to Mandalay, it's really something. Oh, she did, eh, Leroy? Mrs. Bullard said that? Oh, she did. She didn't say what it was. She just said it was something. Yeah. <laughs> Mandalay is one of my favorites, of course. There's a song with some meaning, some feeling in it. On the road to Mandalay, where the flying fishes play. A little different from the sort of things your crooner sings, my dear. Oh, if you'd ever hear Larry, lad, but really hear him, Uncle Mort, you be gone, but gone. His voice just makes you all goose pimply inside. Oh, he sounds like he's gargling. <laughs> Make him stop saying that, Uncle Moore. Oh, that's nice. Leroy, that's enough. And you too, my dear. Finish your breakfast, both of you. I'm going downtown in a little while. Look, and... here's his picture, Uncle Moore. You can see he's just perfect. I don't want to look at him. Let me see that a minute. Where did this little gold frame come from, may I ask? The frame? Oh, it came out of my room. I've got 112 pictures of Larry, and I always have one where I can see it no matter where I have You to... know what I mean, Marjorie? Whose picture was in this frame before this this crooner came into your life? Yeah, whose what? You shut up. Well, your picture was in it, Uncle Mort. I thought so. But it was sort of lost in my dresser with those pictures of Larry all around it. I mean, he's so young and handsome. And, well, I thought your picture would get more attention and stand out better fastened on my mirror. Oh? Well, <laughs> fastened on your mirror, eh? Yeah, on the back of it. What? <laughs> Now, see here, Marjorie. And for goodness sake, Marjorie, let's just be a little sensible about this thing, that's all. Yes, Uncle Mort. Use a little restraint. After all, he's just another singer, my dear. He's not Caruso, you know. Caruso? Oh, Uncle Mort, really? I mean, can you picture one of those old-time tenors trying to get any real feeling into... A, a rainy night in Rio, for instance? Oh, for heaven's sake. If this lake fellow ever tried to sing anything really good, like, well, Road to Mandalay, he'd sound flatter than a tortilla. Uncle Mort, just because you like the way you sing, I don't think you have any right to insult the great. I didn't say anything about my singing. I happen to do the Road to Mandalay rather well, but that has nothing to do with it. On the road to Mandalay where the flying fishes play. I just don't like to see you making a fool of yourself, Marjorie. All right, don't worry. I'll put your picture back in the gold frame. I didn't say that. Although it is ridiculous to have a hundred pictures of the same fellow. When you start carrying pictures of a crooner around in your purse... I wish you wouldn't use that word. It's so common. Purse? What do you call it, a pocketbook? <laughs> Crooner, I mean. Yes. There are literally just hundreds of crooners on the air. There's only one Larry Lake. <sighs> That's more than enough. Larry, lad. Honestly, when he sings, your heart just sort of rolls over inside. And Leslie touched him, Uncle Mort. Actually touched him with her hand at a broadcast. She kept her hand wrapped up till her mother made her wash it. And... <laughs> If he ever touched me, I'd die. I'd just die. I give up. I'm going to park the car here, my dear. Thanks for the lift, Dunky. I'm going to the bank in the barbershop, and I'll be at Peavy's around noon if you want to ride home. Okay, I've got to rush now, though. Larry's newest recording goes on sale today. Recording? Mm-hmm. He just made the road to Mandalay. You what? Know? He swings the last chorus, and it's absolutely out of this world. She is nothing sacred. <laughs> Peavy. Good morning, Mr. Gildersleeve. Something I can do for you? I, uh, I need some shaving cream, Peavy. The uh, usual kind? Yes. Well, I'm afraid I just sold the last jar of that a while ago. I ought to have some more in in a week or so, though. What am I going to do for a week? Let my beard grow? And lots of people do. What else have you got that's good? Well, I've got about all the popular brands, Mr. Gildersleeve. I guess they're all pretty good, or they wouldn't be popular brands. All right. Give me whatever you use yourself. I don't care. Well, I use an electric razor myself. But... <laughs> I got it for Christmas, and I thought I ought to try it out. Confounded, Peavy, give me that jar there. The one on the end. 
Got enough on my mind without standing here trying to argue you into selling me something. Oh, I'm always glad to sell anything to my customers, Mr. Gildersleeve, if they just tell me what they want. Oh, by the way, your niece was in here a while ago. She was? By George, I'm a little worried about Marjorie Peavy. She's got a silly crush on one of those radio crooners. Bobby Sock stuff. She doesn't know whether she's coming or going. And she was going the last I saw her. <laughs> All she does is sit around and listen to his records all day. She doesn't study. She doesn't eat right. She keeps the whole house in an uproar. I've read about cases like that, Mr. Gildersleeve. They, they say that when that young Sinatra fellow sings, girls fall right down in the aisle at the theater. <laughs> You'd think if he affected them that way, they'd stay home. That's just the point, Peavy. They don't stay home. They like that stuff. Doggone it, you don't know how well off you are, Peavy. You're lucky you haven't any children. Well, now, I wouldn't say... And yes, I guess at times I would say that. Okay. Hello, Peavy. Hello, Gildy. Good morning, Judge. Hello, Horace. That'll be all, Peavy. Will you wrap it up? Saw Marjorie down the street a while ago. She's a nice child, Gildy. Going to be a very pretty woman. Well, I wish she'd start. Being a woman, I mean. Okay. Darn it, Judge. These kids seem to get younger all the time instead of older. I wish I had that trouble. <laughs> Marjorie's gone bobby socks all at once over one of those darn crooners. Listens to his records from morning till night. He's got pictures of them all over the house. 120 of them or something. I used to save pictures when I was a youngster. I had quite a few of Lillian Russell at one time. <laughs> Mrs. Peavy gave them to the uh, Salvation Army, as I recall. Well, Marjorie's got the whole house upset. The trouble with you is that you worry too much, Gildy. Children Marjorie's age are very susceptible to infatuations of that sort. It's a perfectly normal reaction. What do you know about children, Hooker? Well, I spent a good many years with children and their problems on the juvenile bench, Gildy, as you well know. After all, I was barely 30 years old when I went into juvenile court. What were you, the youngest judge or the oldest defendant? <laughs> you know my record, and my advice to you is to stop trying to live the children's lives for them. Let him alone. Marjorie will probably forget all about this crooner in a week. I'm ready to forget him right now. Best thing you can do. You going to the symphony concert tonight, by the way? Uh, symphony? Yes. Don't you read the papers, Gildy? The Toledo Civic Orchestra is at the auditorium. Some new conductor is supposed to be very good. I've got troubles enough. I'm going home. Oh, uh, before you go, Mr. Gildersleeve, your niece left this note for you. Uh -huh. I suppose you will want to read it or take it with you. Note? Of course I want to read it, Peavy. You didn't tell me Marjorie left a note for me. Well, you didn't ask me, Mr. Gilmer, Oh, very good. She said she was waiting in the car for you, but she had to leave, so she wrote this note. I gave her the paper, compliments of the pharmacy. Yeah, very white of you, Peavy. Now, let me read it, will you please? Uh, dear Uncle Mort, Larry Lake was on a record program, so I listened in the car. You'd better do something about your battery. It ran down right in the middle of the program, and... Oh! Many of you food shoppers have, I'll bet, noticed a recent big change in your dealer's dairy department. Yes, Kraft American is back. Yes, Kraft American is back, and it's wonderful. So much better than substitute kinds. That's right. Now you can get genuine Kraft American pasteurized processed cheese. The cheese with the medium mellow cheddar flavor. The cheese that always toasts and melts to perfection. And I can tell you that the folks at Kraft are pretty tickled now that enough cheddars have had time to age so they can get that mellow flavor you've been missing so long. And the cooking quality we want, too. Why, I'm buying Kraft American in the two-pound loaf. Well, whether you prefer the half-pound package, the two-pound loaf, or cuts or slices from a five-pound loaf, look at the label or wrapper and make sure it's plainly marked Kraft American. Yes, that's important. Get Kraft American. You can now, tomorrow. Dependable, genuine Kraft American is back. <laughs> And now back to the great Gildersleeve. For at least once in his life, he's in need of some expert advice on child psychology. So, as always, he turns to his friend, Eve Goodwin. Eh, uh, you look beautiful, Eve. 
I thought you said you had a problem, Throckmorton. What is it? Huh? Oh, oh, that. Well, <clears throat> it's about Marjorie. Marjorie? Yeah, she's gone completely off her beam for some confounded crooner, Eve. Oh, is that all? I wouldn't worry about you that. You don't know what goes on around there, Eve. She plays his records over and over all day long. Larry Lake. Larry Lake's beautiful voice. Larry, lad, isn't he wonderful? Marjorie even took my picture out of a little gold frame I gave her and put his picture in it. Poor Throckmorton. Is your vanity hurt a little? In my eardrums, too. Mm-hmm. If I hear any more of his blatting, I'm going to forbid her to play another record while I'm in the house. Oh, no, Throckmorton. No, that's where you make your biggest mistake. You must do it gently. Gently. Huh? Oh, how many times have I told you, we who handle children in this... this difficult adolescent stage must do it with a soft touch. It's no soft touch getting these kids of mine to do anything. You must guide the child, Throckmorton. Never push her. That age, their feelings are pretty easily hurt. Bruce's feelings often lead the child to a defense mechanism of stubbornness. Yeah, but, but gee whiz, Eve, I've got some feelings too, haven't I? I... I have about you, Eve. <laughs> Uh, this, uh, this infatuation with this crooner, it's a very normal thing, you know. It's just part of growing up. Part of the transition from girlhood to womanhood. I bet you never acted like that. I bet you never sat with your head in the Victrola clear to the shoulders and played some silly record over and over. The very same record. Mm, I don't know. I'm afraid I wasn't so pure. I remember a record of Nick Lucas that my father threatened to... Hmm. Uh, but about Marjorie Throckmorton, you must be patient. Never forbid the child to play a favorite record. Have you heard this Larry Lake character? Sounds like he's gargling. Here, let me play one of these records, just part no, of it. No, don't bother. I've heard quite a few of the type lately. But to Marjorie, it's music, don't you see? Never tell her not to listen to music. Simply encourage her to listen to good music. The better sort of thing. Any sort of thing is better than this guy. Seems like he's got a nose and a ringer. Mm-hmm. Marjorie is simply hungry for music. Give her a chance to satisfy that hunger with better music. Oh? Why don't you take her to the symphony, for instance? The Toledo Civic's in town tonight, you know. To tonight? Uh-huh. The symphony would be very good for you, too, Throckmorton. Well, sure, I love good music myself. I could go to a symphony concert every night of the week. If you let me hold your hand through it, Eve. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, but... I'll have to miss it. I presume that was an invitation. Of course. Come on. Let's uh, go. I'm sorry. I have a teacher's meeting tonight. You take Marjorie, though. I'm sure it'll help her a lot. Charles Sutherland Braden's conducting. He's one of the composers who's doing so much lately to push American music to the front. Oh, good. It ought to be up there in front, all right. Mm. <laughs> I'm sure if Marjorie hears enough really fine music, your little problem will soon end. Oh. Uh-huh. And you'll get your picture back in the gold frame. By George, I'll do it, Eve. I'll get the tickets on the way home. Good. If I can pry Marge away from that record player long enough to go to buy George, I'll get her away from no, it. No, 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 no. Gently, Throckmorton. Gently. Mm. Don't push the charge. You can persuade her to go, but hand it deftly. Oh, deftly. Yeah. You know, you do have a very persuasive manner when you try. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do, huh? Doesn't seem to work very well, though, with you, Eve. No, it will with Marjorie. You see, Marjorie won't know your motives, but I know them pretty well, Throckmorton. Oh, you do, don't you? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Might have known Eve would know how to handle the situation. Give Marjorie some good music and she'll... I hope she's home. Uh, oh, brother, she's home. Well, hello, Marjorie, my dear. Hello, Uncle Marge. Larry Lake. Listen to him take this. Yeah, I heard him. <laughs> Holds his breath long, doesn't he? <laughs> Not long enough. <laughs> well, that was very nice, though, my dear. I like to see you show interest in music. Good music, I mean. Oh, he's so wonderful, Uncle Mort. Honestly, how perfect can you be? <laughs> yes. I brought you a new album, my dear. Oh, Uncle, how perfectly super. I've been wanting Larry's new album, but I didn't have enough money today oh, to Oh, this buy... isn't anything like that, my dear. This is something special. Something really fine. Charles Sutherland Braden, the great American composer. It's called uh, A Day in the Western Hemisphere. Uh, see there? Oh, I never heard of him. Oh, you will, my dear. He's becoming quite famous. I, uh... Even got us some tickets for his concert this evening at the auditorium. 
Third row. Oh, thanks, Uncle Mort, but I won't be able to go out tonight at all. Larry Ladd is on tonight. That fellow's always on. Uh, uh, here, let's try one of these records, huh? They say this man, Braden, is sensational. I'll play it after a while. I got my new record of Larry this morning, Unky. Wait till you hear it. Just imagine him doing Road to Mandalay. Well, that's one of your favorites, isn't it? You love this. I will not. Uh, gently, gently. Uh, Marjorie, about this concert this evening. I really think you'd enjoy it, my dear. This Braden is one of the really great modern musicians, they say. Sounds pretty dull to me. Now listen, just this last part. Well. Oh, turn it off. Turn that confounded thing off, Marjorie. What's the matter now, Uncle Mort? Rocky disrupted road to men. I mean, people just don't go around turning off Larry Lake, after all. This people do, uh, do. <laughs> You're going to the concert with me this evening. Why don't you take Leroy? Because I'm taking you. But Larry is singing tonight on the craft program. I don't care if he's singing in this living room and playing a nose flute at the same time. <laughs> You're going to the symphony. But I... He was all a howling. You stay out of there. Okay. We leave here at 7.30 sharp, Marjorie. That's fine. <laughs> Mrs. Van Hartsfeld. Well, these seats are very good, aren't they, my dear? They're close. Yeah, I wanted to get us the best. Look at this crowd, huh? Yeah, this is going to be wonderful. Mm-hmm. You uh, comfortable, all right? I guess so. Care for some candy? Brought a box of chocolates just for the two of us. Uh, opera chocolates, they're called. I suppose we can eat them at the symphony. <laughs> uh, here, help yourself. I'm not hungry. Well, you will be. Let's see what the program. Yeah, Summerfield League for Culture. Proudly presents Charles Sutherland Braden, eminent composer and conductor. Oh, look, he's going to play the numbers from that album I brought you. Say, this will be wonderful. What time is it? Almost 8 o'clock. Time to start. 8 o'clock. Larry will be coming on in a minute. Shh. Here comes the conductor. Yeah, let's see. A day in the Western Hemisphere. First number is, oh yes, it's called Dawn. Birds. Ooh, that lovely. <laughs> oh, what happened? Well, that was, uh, was quite a thing, wasn't it, Marjorie? Dawn, eh? Quite a daybreak there. <laughs> Let's see. The next number is, oh, yes, Blaze of Noon. <laughs> yeah, this could be a hot number. himself into his music, doesn't he? Marjorie, you asleep? No, Uncle Mort, I'm all right. Of course. How could she sleep with all this noise? This fellow's stuff is uh, pretty modern, of course, but, well, this is the last number. See, it's called uh, Midnight. Probably going to blow up the auditorium. Cello. Quite an experience, wasn't it? You have to give that sort of thing a chance, of course. Like olives. <laughs> Leave the car in the driveway tonight. I'm tired. Uh, let's go in. 
Don't forget your purse. Oh, thanks. I didn't know we were home. You've been awfully quiet all the way home. Sleepy? No. I've just been thinking, Uncle Mort. Oh? <laughs> Don't overdo it, my dear. You're still pretty young. I'm not as young as I was, Uncle Mort. I've been thinking about that music tonight. Yeah, that was... It's so... Well, I mean, it has something to it, some meaning. Yeah, if we just had an interpreter. <laughs> I've been comparing it with, well, other things. Yeah, that's what Eve said. You, I mean, well, it was different from that Larry Lake stuff, all right. <laughs> it was even different from music. Larry Lake, that crooner. Huh? Something happened to me tonight listening to that concert, Uncle Mort. I, I think I must have grown up just all at once. Larry Lake might be all right for children, little girls, but, well, after all, how juvenile can you be? Uh, yes, but uh, this Braden fellow is a little modern. He's wonderful. Such, such power. That midnight number, honestly. I mean, it just sort of made me all goose pimply inside. I mean, my heart just rolled over and stopped. Yes, well... Uh, Where's that? Oh, here's the album. Charles Sutherland Braden. What a beautiful name. <laughs> When he waves those handsome hands and this tremendous music comes out, I'm gone, but gone. If I'd been close enough to the door, I'd have been gone, too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, of course, uh, this fellow's stuff is nothing like that lake scene. Larry but... Lake. Ugh, he sounds like he's gargling. But Marjorie. <laughs> now, listen, listen. <laughs> Uncle Mort, how sensational can you be? Oh, for the... How mixed up can you be? Let me just touch on the news that Velveeta is plentiful now. Velveeta, the smooth, melting cheese food with the rich yet mild cheddar flavor that children love. Because here's bigger news that millions will welcome back. Kraft American is back. Yes, Kraft American is back. It's in the stores right now, and you can get some tomorrow. Kraft American with the medium mellow cheddar cheese flavor you've hankered for. Kraft American for wonderful toasted sandwiches, smooth cheese sauce, good Welsh rabbits. When you buy from a five-pound loaf, slices from it, or a portion, ask to see the Kraft name on the wrapper. Or get the two-pound loaf for several half-pound packages. You can wave farewell to substitutes. Here's what you've wanted for so long. Genuine Kraft American is back. Yes, your dependable old favorite Kraft American is back. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. Right. The music is by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley as Leroy, Louise Erickson as Marjorie, and Lillian Randolph as Bertie. Earl Ross as Judge Hooker, Dick Legrand plays Mr. Peavy, and Ken Carson played the crooner. Stay tuned in now for Duffy's Tavern, which follows over most of these stations. This is John Lang saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company and inviting you to listen in again next Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. That's right. Good night. <laughs> yeah. Be sure to add it to your shopping list tomorrow. The wonderful Kraft product called Frizz. Frizz makes delicious ice cream right in your refrigerator. Velvety, smooth, rich ice cream with plenty of cream and milk in it. Just add water, a little sugar, and freeze according to directions. You get six generous servings from one package. It's easy to make any flavor you like with Frizz. Because Frizz is made by an exclusive process that retains the fresh cream flavor, and because it freezes smoothly, Frizz ice cream is simply delicious. Frizz, F-R-I-Z-Z. -Z. This is NBC, the national broadcasting.